Corporate finance practice problem using OneNote. Convertible bond, conversion value, and conversion premium. Get ready. It's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If we have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. You're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon on the left-hand side in the practice problems tab, then down in the 1916 convertible bond, conversion value, and conversion premium tab. Also note, when using OneNote, look at the immersive reader tool. Our presentations will also be in the text area. Same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing the icon, we have our information up top. Calculations on down below, looking at convertible bonds. Those being bonds with the option to convert to common stock. So the information we have is the convertible bonds outstanding have a par value of $1,000. They can convert into shares. We're going to say 40 shares. So they can convert the bond into 40 shares of stock. If they so choose, they have the option but not requirement to do so. The common stock market price is going to be 34 So the stock that the bonds could convert to is currently selling for, in other words, the $34, the convertible bond market price, meaning the price that the actual convertible bond is selling for, the bond with that convertible feature on it is selling for at a premium of the $1,400. So we're going to look at the conversion value of the bond, the conversion premium, and conversion price, starting off with a conversion value calculated as the common stock market price and then times the conversion ratio, which is this 40-40 here. So the bond can be converted into 40 shares. So if we think about that, what would be the value if we were to take those, those bonds and do that conversion? Well, the, bond, the stocks are currently selling for $34, and we can convert to 40 shares of them. That means we have the conversion value if converted into the stocks, the stocks then having the current value of the 1360 the 34 times the 40 the conversion premium then can be calculated at the convertible bond market price. That's the price that the bonds are selling for that have that conversion feature added to it minus the conversion value of the bond, which we just calculated. In other words, if we were to say purchase the convertible bonds at the current market price of $1,400, convert them into stocks where this current stock value is at 34 then we would have 1360 worth of stock, which means that uh, we have a difference then of $40. So we would have basically overpaid by basically the $40. So in that case, you might be asking, well, why then would you want the convertible bonds? If you, if you want to convert them, then you're going to convert them. Why not just buy these stocks? Note that the convertible bonds give you as the investor the benefit of, of course, having the bonds there, which would pay you the interest and the principal at the end, at the par value at the end, just like a normal bond, but also gives you the option to convert. And if at a later point in time, the price goes up, then you might take advantage of the conversion option to convert to the stock and then do whatever you want with the stock. It could be a beneficial choice in that case. And if the stock price doesn't go up to make that a beneficial option or it goes down or something like that, you still have the benefits of having the bond in that case, even though you're not exercising the conversion feature. So why would the corporation then issue a bond like this? The corporation may be able to benefit from issuing a bond like this because the conversion feature has value in and of itself because it gives the investor access to the upside, the increase in the, in the potential stock price, but also have the bond there in case things don't go up. And so that added security means that uh, it's more valuable to the investor. So the bonds might be able to be issued then at a lower interest rate. So they might have to be, the, the issuer gets the benefit possibly of issuing the bond at a lower interest rate, getting capital at less of a, of a cost in terms of interest rate in that case. So the conversion price then is comparing the par value. So when we look at the conversion price, we're considering the par value in this case to 1000 not the market price of the bond, comparing that to the conversion ratio of the 40. So the 1,000 divided by the 40 gives us the 25 for the conversion price. Let's take a look at it again. New, scenario, new set of numbers here, similar kind of scenario. Convertible bond outstanding has a par value of 1,000. You can convert into shares 25 shares. So the one bond 
now can be converted into 25 shares of the common stock. It has that convertible feature. Common stock market price, what the common stock that we can convert the bonds into are currently selling for $35. The convertible bond market price, the price of the bond, if you were to buy the bond with the conversion feature, 910. Now note that that 910 is, is now selling at a discount. So the bond itself is selling for less than the par value. So the bond is selling at a discount. That's one of the kind of differences between this and the prior uh, example. So the conversion value of the bond then is going to be the common stock market price, the 35 times the conversion ratio, meaning the number of shares we can convert the bond into. So if we take the bond, convert it into the common stock, then we'd have 25 stocks worth a market value of 35. In this example, that would give us 875. The conversion premium then would be the convertible bond market price. It's currently selling for 910 compared to the conversion value, the 870, 75. So in other words, if I was to buy the convertible bond for the current market price that it's going for, paying 910, and then simply convert them to common stocks at this point in time, we would then convert them and have common stocks valued at 875, meaning I would have basically kind of overpaid by the $35. So that means, of course, we probably wouldn't exercise the conversion point at that point. We would hold on to them, possibly looking for the market price to increase. And if they did, the conversion option then would be a beneficial option. If they do not, then the conversion option basically becomes kind of irrelevant and it acts in essence like a bond at that point. The conversion price then is going to be the comparison of the par value, the $1,000, and the conversion ratio of 25, giving us that conversion price of the $40.